수초레노아나미비미수초마셜로베미수캬가오데미마트건강With the goal of development in mind, the Laotian government has looked towards its vast potential for hydropower production to become the battery of Southeast Asia. Having a relatively small and diverse population, and being bordered by the electricity-hungry nations of China and Thailand, exporting hydropower offers the country an attractive source of funding with which to pursue development projects. Thailand in particular has an avid interest in financing hydropower projects in Laos, due to its huge demand for energy on which its industrial and commercial sectors depend. The Electricity Generation Authority of Thailand is a state-owned enterprise and the main Thai investor in Lao Hydropower. Due to its dual role as both supplier and distributor of energy, it has a vested interest in high energy demand. Under great pressure from environmental groups in Thai civil society, the authority has limited access to dam development in Thailand. Because of this, the authority has instead turned to invest in hydropower in Lao, since Laotian civil society is comparatively weak and largely constrained by the state. Despite massive investment from Thailand, not all of Laos' neighbours are pleased. Vietnam and Cambodia, its downstream neighbours, have protested against the scale of construction of dams and have voiced concerns over the future of fishing stocks, on which significant numbers of Cambodian and Vietnamese people depend. The Mekong River Commission, based in Vientiane and comprised of Cambodia, Laos, Thailand and Vietnam, has failed to reach agreement on many of Laos' controversial projects, but Laos has carried on unabated. At present, there are 14 operational hydropower plants in Laos, 22 currently under construction, and plans exist for over 70 more. The scale of this enterprise will have profound effects on the fluvial geography of Laos and its neighbours, and subsequently the livelihoods of its inhabitants. One of these projects, the Nam Nyum Tu Dam, especially exemplifies the dynamics and controversies surrounding dam building along the Mekong in Laos. The Nam Nam Tu Dam was completed in 2010 and only started commercial operation in the year of 2013. It is located on the Nam Nam River, one of the major tributaries to the Mekong River, 90 kilometres north of Vientiane, the country's capital. It has a capacity of 615 megawatts, with 95% of the electricity produced destined for export to Thailand and only 5% directed to domestic consumption. According to Laotian law, hydropower projects with an installed capacity of more than 15 megawatts must produce reports assessing their social impacts in order to ensure sustainable development, which is defined by the Brundtland Commission as development that meets the needs of current generations without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. Despite this nominal safeguard in Laotian law, the social impacts of the dam are still substantial, with riparian communities along the Nam Nam River significantly affected. As a result of the Nam Nam 2 construction, 17 villages were flooded, resettling more than 6,000 people who belonged to the Fuan, Tai Deng, Tai Dam, Khmu and Hmong ethnicities. The resettlement program offered both financial compensation and a new place to live for these villages, known as focal sites. However, the distinctive cultural identities and ways of life of these minorities have been greatly eroded by this forced relocation, where compensation may not be sufficient to make up such huge consequences. The loss of religious and cultural identity is feared by the resettled villagers. They also fear that the cultural harmony that has characterised their relations for centuries is being threatened. According to the resettlement plan, villagers belonging to different ethnic groups will be lumped together in the same focal sites. This will present two major challenges to them. Firstly, despite the fact that ethnicities have coexisted peacefully in the past, even celebrating together in traditional festivals, they are not yet accustomed to coexistence in such close quarters. Secondly, the fact that the authorities are building exclusively Buddhist temples in these new areas is seen as a provocation to those who don't belong to the majority of one. Villagers belonging to other ethnic minorities fear that without a place to worship, their cultures will surely go extinct. This privileged position of the majority Fuan in the resettlement plan clearly stands against Article 8 of the Lao Constitution, which states, The loss of traditional culture is the loss of the Lao nation. 
Despite the severe consequences of the Nam Num Tu Dam to the ethnic minorities, they are unable to influence this political decision. Lao is a one-party communist state, and the Lao People's Revolutionary Party has a virtual monopoly on political power. The traditional political structure of the country is largely based on patron-client relationships, which foster corruption. Local officials often appropriate funds given for local development, which is also evident in the case of the Nam Nung Tu Dam. Whilst there is huge top-down pressure for the dam's construction and operation, affected minorities are outside the state's bureaucratic power structure, which is dominated by ethnic Laotians. Lacking a powerful patron to make their case, they are unable to resist the discrimination that they encounter due to development of the dam. The dam disproportionately affects these ethnic minorities. The future livelihoods of riparian ethnic minorities in Laos will depend on development of and governmental engagement with Laotian civil society, alongside support from NGOs to balance the pressure exerted by its neighbours to provide electricity. In addition, the Mekong does not flow through Laos alone. Its stream goes through six Southeast Asian countries. These nations must reach a compromise to avert the potential harm caused by unilateral action on the river. It is as yet unclear whether this is an achievable goal. Thank you.